What's going on you guys and welcome back to another video. This video will be the first of many videos on this channel where I'll show you guys how to install iOS 6, jailbreak it, and actually get a lot of apps onto this device and really just bring back a bunch of functionality to your old Apple products. Now, this is the first video I'll be launching in this new series. It's gonna be called iOS 6, and it's gonna pretty much have every single video from downgrading to jailbreaking to installing apps and tweaks. And to kick off this video on this channel, I'll show you guys how to actually dual boot iOS 6 in 2025. Now, previously I made a video about three years ago. The method that I used back then honestly is outdated. It doesn't always work. However, the method in today's video is trust by the legacy jailbreak community and is overall a much easier and simpler process to follow. But anyways, let's get right into it. This video is going to be a little long, so grab a snack, grab a drink, and enjoy. And by the way, a portion of this video is sponsored by ESR, but more on that later in this video. Okay, real quick, what exactly is a dual boot and how is it different from a traditional downgrade? Now, a downgrade is simply installing an older iOS version than the one that you're running. For example, when it comes to the iPhone 5, there's actually three different ways to downgrade this device. I'll talk about the other two towards the end of this video, but essentially the third and easiest option is to dual boot your device, which is when you run two different iOS versions at the same time. So think of it as like running iOS 8 and iOS 6. That's essentially what we're going to try to achieve here and the best part is it's technically like untethered as well meaning if you turn off the device and turn it on again it'll boot straight into ios 6. all right let's get right into it okay real quick let's talk about what you'll need to actually make this dual boot possible now i'll be using of course my iphone 5 on ios 10.3.4 but you can also use one of the devices here that you see on the screen feel free to pause the video here if you need to now you'll also notice that there's an ios version attached to each device now this is the version you'll ideally want to be on this video is going to assume that you're running the latest version of that specific device in this case the iphone 5's last supported ios was 10.3.4 and real quick, I just wanted to mention, please do not update your iOS device to the latest iOS version, just because the version that you're currently on could be rare and you definitely don't wanna mess around with it too much. So keep it as it is because you might have other options. Now, the next thing of course we'll need here is a Mac computer. I use my MacBook Pro M1 from 2021 running Mac OS Sonoma, so I can confirm that this works on Apple Silicon. You can also do this on a PC computer as well, and I can make a separate tutorial for that if you guys would like. Comment down below if that's something you guys would be interested in. And lastly, a lightning cable and about 30 minutes or so for this entire process. Okay, now let's actually get started. Now this process, of course, is gonna be for the MacBook. Super simple, start by plugging in your Apple device into the computer. I highly recommend using a USB type A to lightning cable. This is really important. Uh, use the original one that came with the device or you can use a generic one like I'm using here. Just don't use a type C cable, it will not work with this process. Now, some quick reminders, of course, if you have iCloud, now would be a good time to disable Find My iPhone and also disable your iPhone passcode. This will make the next few steps a lot more easier. And also please take a backup now if you have any information because the next step will completely wipe this device to factory settings. And lastly, let's go ahead and actually power off this device. Okay, now the next step is gonna be a little tricky. We're gonna go ahead and put our Apple device into DFU mode. So in order to do this, what we wanna do first is while the device is powered off, hold the power button for three seconds and then press and hold the home button while continuing to hold the power button for an additional 10 seconds. So we're gonna keep holding those two buttons and then after 10 seconds, we're gonna let go of the power button and continue holding the home button. This process might take a little while. I mean, you could probably just count in your head. It should be pretty easy, but your computer will automatically detect the device in DFU mode, and you'll know that it worked if you get some sort of prompt from iTunes, and the screen of your device is also gonna stay black during this process, which is completely normal. And then after we're in DFE mode, keep the device plugged into the computer and head over to the internet and visit the legacy iOS kit, or you can just use the link down in the description box below. And this is gonna take you to a GitHub page. And then when you're on here, simply click the latest icon under releases. And this script that you see here is pretty much upgraded very frequently by the developer. And you'll need to download the latest Mac OS release and then go ahead and unzip that folder if you need to. Locate the restore.sh file inside that folder, and then we're gonna go ahead and open up a terminal window and drag that restore.sh file into terminal and hit enter 
on your keyboard. Now I might ask you to put in some sort of MacBook password. Go ahead and do that and it's not going to show anything. Everything's just going to be in the background. But once you are done entering the passcode, go ahead and click enter and then unplug your iPhone and replug it in if the script asks you to and rerun the script um, if it asks you to do that as well. But eventually the program should detect your device in DFU mode and it's going to give you a bunch of different options and to actually like kind of navigate throughout this script here you can use the arrow keys on your keyboard but we want to select the first option here it's going to be restore slash downgrade and hit enter now in this case we're actually going to select iOS 8.4.1 I'll explain why in just a second uh, but yeah go ahead and click that and click download target IPSW and then iOS 8.4.1 will start to download now you guys are probably wondering why are we going to iOS 8 so fun fact, Apple still secretly signs this version of iOS. Signing just means that you can like downgrade to it without any limitations from Apple. Now the reason why is because the iPhone 5, for example, cannot be updated to iOS 10 straight from iOS 6. And this is like some sort of like software limitation Apple put into place, probably because like if you try to update um, like four generations later, like it could probably like actually brick the device so apple put this measure into place and so you have to go to ios 8 first and then go from ios 8 to ios 10 so fun little fact there um but yeah let's go ahead and wait for this to download it's a pretty quick process and shouldn't take too long and also the good news is ios 8 has an untethered jailbreak as well we'll talk about why that's important later on in this video but once it's downloaded simply go ahead and select start restore and the next part here is going to be important guys please make sure you guys select yes for the option to jailbreak uh, this is going to be really important for the next step and for the option here where it asks you about the ram memory option you can also select yes here um, but if your mac has less than eight gigabytes of ram i would recommend selecting no but yeah the program is going to do its thing for like the next few minutes so it's just going to take a little while here but if you're noticing that it's not really making any progress then you can actually click on the timestamp right over here on this video i do have a little uh, section here in case you are experiencing any errors because honestly they can happen from time to time but usually it should be fine but just in case you guys can definitely check that out if you guys need to but while we wait for the script to run in the background let's take a quick second to talk about today's video sponsor now esr sent over a bunch of different products to check out but the one that really stood out to me here was their wireless car charger now i just had to hook this up using the air vent clips which are conveniently included with this pack and I really like that I can now use my main iPhone. I don't usually always carry on the iPhone 5 with me everywhere I go, but I'm using the iPhone 14 Pro here in standby mode, which is huge because I feel like this feature is so underutilized. I also use it as a little music player and of course while using maps as well. Now this car does have Apple CarPlay built in, however you do have to plug it in manually every single time, but using ESR's wireless car charger is an all-in-one system. Now the cool thing about this charger is that it's also capable of delivering Qi 2 15 watt fast charging and unlike traditional car chargers this little device features its patented cryo boost technology which has a built-in cooling fan you can even hear it up close as well take a look at this over here now the magnets are also really strong providing up to 1600 grams of grip to keep your phone secure even during the most bumpy rides and this is one thing i didn't realize but it comes with two different mounts as well you can either clip it on the air vent which is what i'm doing here in the camry or you can also mount it on the dashboard as well and i feel like having both options is something that a lot of brands don't offer especially if you're driving like a different car so it's really nice to see now be sure to check it out down in the description box below and a huge thank you to esr for sponsoring this portion of today's video all right, now back to the video. Now, once the script is done, your device will show the Apple logo with a loading bar. This is a sign that the process was successful and your phone should now be downgraded to iOS 8. Now, your phone's going to boot up. You'll go through the setup screen as usual. And once again, do not sign into iCloud or App Store. You can also skip the iPhone passcode as well. This is going to be really helpful for the next step in this video. Uh, but once you're on the home screen, you can navigate to Cydia and let it set up. At this point, we're like 80% done, guys. So you guys should be very proud of yourself on getting this far. Now, the last few steps in this video are also going to be really crucial. So what we want to do here is, first of all, open up Safari after we set up Cydia and go to this link. It's going to be tlsroot.litten.ca. I'll have a link down below as well, link number two. Um, but yeah, this is going to link us to Novoxy Play Games' ISRG root certificate. And essentially the reason why we're installing this is that this certificate will help your device uh, as it's running outdated software, especially because like Cydia is such an old uh, 
uh, app and so a lot of things just don't really work anymore but installing this should fix any errors that you run into on the Cydia application itself. Now the next step here of course is going to be opening up the Cydia app and actually installing the Cool Booter repo. Now Cool Booter is the app that's going to allow us to install iOS 6 and we want to install this repo here it's going to be HTTP make sure we add the S in there as well and then type in coolbooter.com and uh, once that is done we're going to go ahead and hit install and then just wait for this thing to do its thing and then we're going to go ahead and open up the source and locate cool booter make sure we don't accidentally install cool booter cli here but go ahead and hit modify at the top right and hit downgrade this is going to be really important install 1.4.1 release this one should be the most stable from my experience i mean that's the one i've been using for like the past four years and i haven't really had any issues with it and then go ahead and install that package now once that's done open up cool booter and hit the install button now this process here will show you guys a bunch of different ios versions you can choose from but you can also you know install like ios 7 if you wanted to but in this video we're going to specifically focus on ios 6 and we're actually going to go with 6.1.3 but i imagine this process is pretty much the same for any other version on here but before we click i'm ready go ahead and click on storage and you want to go ahead and you know max this out if you'd like especially if you're not really planning on using the ios 8 partition here and uh, yeah that's what i ended up doing right over here and just be mindful of how much storage uh, this device has as well obviously if you started with like an iphone 5 with 64 gigs of storage that would be much better but unfortunately this device only has 16 gigs to start with but once we are ready go ahead and click i am ready and then you're going to see a couple options here for the custom boot loop and a verbose boot i usually just end up selecting no but once again it's going to ask us for a jailbreak click yes for this it's just going to save us so much more time in the future but yeah uh, let the app do its thing um, now one thing to also remember is that cool booter is really risky it does modify the device's partition which technically is dangerous but it is required to do a boot ios 6 and as a result there is a possibility that this process could fail and if it does you'll need to dfu restore this device using itunes and then reinstall the latest ios and repeat the process now the thing is let's say if your device does end up getting bricked and you need to like restore it um, it might be kind of hard to put it into dfu mode especially if like the screen's off you might not really know like when to start the process so what i usually like to do is just like hold the home button and then plug it in uh, into the computer and then keep holding the home button until the recovery sign appears and that usually is a pretty good sign that your device is ready to be restored a lot of trial and error yes but the good thing is that once this process is done and once it's on ios 6 it should work perfectly fine now my other iphone 5 here has been on cool booter since like 2021 when i started this channel and i've had like no issues and i can even confirm right like i have a phone call here i tried to make back in 2021 but yeah it should be fine as long as you guys don't mess around too much with the partition but after a while ios 6 will download and the device will prepare to install and just make sure that you guys keep it plugged in you know some of these devices uh, don't have the best batteries and so the last thing we want is for the device to shut off mid install and then you might also see a storage almost full pop-up simply hit done and uh, yeah that's going to dismiss it there now once the process is done you'll see a sign that says reboot now before we do anything at this point just go ahead and unplug your device we're going to unplug it temporarily but this device will then begin to reboot so go ahead and actually reboot that device and then once that's done unlock it open up cool booter and then we're going to go ahead and hit boot now this device will then ask you to press the lock button then go ahead and press it immediately and if everything goes as planned you should boot in to the ios 6 setup screen congratulations you're officially on ios 6 set up the phone as you normally would and we can also head into Cydia and uh yeah usually for options like these I end up selecting user and then I go with a complete upgrade but there we have it guys we're on iOS 6 I know I skipped a bit of the of the setup screen there but it's 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 pretty cool like I I really do think this is like one of the easiest processes processes I don't even know if that's a word uh to follow so yeah hope this helps you guys out a lot but at this point we are on ios 6 and are ready to start playing around with it now i did mention in the beginning of this video that you can actually achieve an almost 
untethered experience as well. Now to do that, we'll need to install the Cool Booter Untethered Tweak. Um, so what we gotta do here simply, in, if you guys wanna do that, simply power off the device and then turn it back on. It's gonna boot back into iOS 8. And then we're gonna open up Cydia and install the Cool Booter Untetherer inside the Cool Booter source. Um, now if for any reason you get a weird error that says like dpkg underscore locked, um, you'll actually need to go back to this timestamp in the video and you'll need to reinstall that ISRG root X1CA certificate once again and try reinstalling the untethered tweak. But once installed, your device will pretty much always boot into iOS 6 whenever it's powered up. And we can also test that out here as well. But yeah, it's pretty cool to see. But if for any reason you do want to boot back into iOS 8, you'll need to press and hold the volume down button the entire time that the phone is booting up. Now you can start this process after you see the Apple logo whenever you turn it on, but make sure that you continuously hold the volume down button. And this process honestly can take up to like two, three minutes sometimes. So just be patient, just keep holding it. And I would only recommend letting go of the volume down button until after you see the iOS 8 lock screen. And once again, like this process can sometimes take 30 seconds, a minute, sometimes even two minutes. I feel like that might be kind of pushing it, but uh, you guys get the idea. It is going to take a little bit of time. But anyways, congratulations. You are now on iOS 6. Um, for apps and tweaks, I'll make more videos in the coming months, but for now, feel free to play around with it. I do recommend checking out the Legacy Jailbreak subreddit for more information, but I'll make a follow-up video very soon as part of the iOS 6 series, so look out for that. And let me know if you guys have any questions down in the comment section below. I'll try to help out as many of you guys as I can, but you know, I do encourage you guys to help each other out in the comments below. And uh, if you guys have any resources to share, be sure to comment those down as well. And of course, you guys probably also remember earlier on in this video, I was talking about some other downgrade methods Methods. Now, there are other ways you can downgrade the iPhone 5 as well. There's one method called Nightshade. It's technically a tethered downgrade, meaning that you'll need to reconnect your iPhone to a computer every single time it runs out of battery. It's not practical and it's, it's honestly not going to be a lot of fun having to plug it in. And the other downgrade method is using the iBoot exploit from iOS 7. Now, certain iOS devices like the iPhone 5, if they're running iOS 7, can be downgraded untethered down to iOS 6. And this is a pretty interesting process because it uses this iBoot exploit that was discovered um, only on iOS 7. So I think it was patched with later versions of iOS. Now, in terms of rarity, it's gonna be hard to come by an iPhone 5 that's on iOS 7 and it's not completely practical because you know, like how often are you gonna find an iPhone 5 that's running iOS 7 on eBay? So something to keep in mind. Dual booting, in my opinion, is the most practical as I've had it on my iPhone 5 for almost like four years at this point with no issues. I can confirm that it does work. Um, but anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed this video and I hope this helped you guys out a lot. Let me know if you guys have any questions and I'll catch you guys on the next one. Peace. Real quick, just wanted to pop in here and let you guys know that sometimes errors do happen. And while I was filming this video, I wanted to show you guys here that when I was originally downgrading to iOS 8, the program actually ended up failing right over here. And this is actually completely normal. It, it's gonna happen sometimes. And you know, this is even like a learning opportunity for me, but essentially what you wanna do in cases like this, I'll go ahead and switch to the MacBook real quick, but you wanna go ahead and just, you know, close out the terminal window and open a new one. The device technically is still in its DFU mode, or at least it should be. Um, but if it's not, go ahead and follow the same instructions uh, for putting the device back in DFU mode and you can go ahead and continue. But just want to let you guys know if you do run into any errors, that is typically the next step you'd want to take.